Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So we've been going over together some particle examples and, and how to um, understand some of the aspects of the particle examples. I'd like to continue this week by talking a little bit about actions. So let's just take a look here. We're going to start by looking at the numbers example that I had done the other week because I find this one is the most useful one to understand where all the particles are and stuff. So far all I have in this system is an emitter. And remember I was saying um, a little while ago that when you create particles, it's going to create particles on every frame. So in this case, I've turned the probability up to 100, and then it's up to 1. And there's a bit of pre-roll, so that means on every frame it's going to create a particle. But you can see that they're never going away. They're never dying, because I don't have any kill module on here, um, and I don't have any region where they stop existing. So, you know, as long as they exist in this region, they're, they're I'm going to keep adding every frame. To make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to go in here as well and just turn down the size on this. I'll turn off my um, animate button because I don't really care about animating this. Size of zero, there don't exist at all, and that's a little bit too small, so let's do something like that. Okay, so now I'm creating particles on every frame, which is cool, but um, maybe I'd like to move these particles. So we'll start by moving the particles, and then I'll show you how to create a sync to define where those exist. So First I'm going to emit my particles and then I want to move them. So I can go into my module library and into my particle tab and I can first define that I want them to move because remember I was saying before that you want to move the particles first and then you want to calculate whether they exist in the system or whether they exist in the region. So We'll move them and we have to first define either an initial velocity or some gravity. So let's just go the simple route. We'll define some gravity. So they're going to be created up here. Let's move this region up. Let's pretend that this is this is rain. Okay, I'm raining numbers. It's raining numbers. So um, actually for rain it might make more sense to have... Oh, I do have a box. Okay, so I have a box. Great, it's raining. And um, I might want to make my box you know, big enough that it can kind of encompass that big big old region up there and I could move it up. Here, let's undo that for a second here. Okay, I want to adjust um, the size of this region right here so I can just move it a little bit like that. There we go. And then I'll just move the position of the region up. Turn that off. Okay. There we go. So now I've got all these particles that are being created kind of at the top, but they're not falling down. And so if I want them to fall down, I, I have the move turned on, but I have no action that's telling them to fall down. So that's when I have to add the gravity in. And then the gravity is, by default, it's set to minus 1 in the y direction. So they're falling down, but they're kind of falling a little bit too fast. So I just want to go back in there and put that maybe to minus 0.5 or let's start with 3, minus 0.3. So now they're kind of falling, but they're falling more slowly. So that's pretty good. There we go. Got a little bit of rain. You notice now how all of my numbers have turned on their side. Um, so if all the numbers have turned on their side, this is where you probably want to put in that aligned direction. If you care about the direction of the particles, which for something like rain you would, then you can go inside your sprite emitter and you can align them, and I've got it aligned with the positive x, but I really want to align it with the negative y, I guess. There we go. So now they're all falling down like that. Okay, good. So now what we've done is we've generated some particles, we have moved them, and we've applied some gravity. So they're going through here. But if I zoom out far enough, do you see that they're, they're falling all the way down here, which is like way outside my camera view. I don't want them to keep falling out there, I want them to disappear when they're outside my camera view because I don't care about what happens outside my camera. So in order to make them disappear, this is where you can add that region where you say that it exists, and this is called the sink. So if you look at the properties of the sink, the only thing in here is the invert. So you can either use your sink to define where the particles exist or where they disappear. So in other words, if you think about an actual sink in real life that has a drain um, and you think of the water that you're putting in your sink like you're, you have the tap on and the water is defining like your particles, right? When they go through the drain, they're leaving the sink. And so if you want that 
that's the normal way that a sink behaves. So if you want to define a region in here, let's do this just so you can see. So we'll define a, it should be a 3D region if you're going to have a 3D region where they're created. In fact, just to be safe, it's always good to have a sink as a 3D region. Um, and then here I can define this as a, as a box. And then I'll do my view show control so I can see where that box is. And then I'll also just show my perspective view so that I can make sure that my box is large enough to encompass my system. And I'll also turn on at the same time, I'll turn on my, um, my sink, or sorry, my, my uh, this is the, the other region is the region where they're being created. And the reason is that I need to make sure that that region is inside the other one because if it's not inside the sink, then the particles are gonna be generated somewhere outside. So I kind of need to make sure that I make sure that my sink is big enough to encompass where the region or where their particles are being created. But the important thing is that you really don't need your region to be so big or so tall that you know it goes way outside your camera view. So you kind of want to just make it a good size like that. So now if I turn off my regions and we take a look at what's going on here, and maybe just for the sake of being able to see my particles better, I'll make them bigger again. Now I've decided I don't like them so small. Let's make them a bit bigger. Okay, so now if I take a look at those particles, um, they're starting up at the top there, at that region there, and then do you see that they're disappearing right about here? And that's because they're leaving the sink at the bottom. So the sink defines where the particles are allowed to exist. You can also use the sink kind of in the opposite way though. If I turn my sink back on, so I'll show Oops, I'll show the 3D region. I want to show the region there. And if I attach a peg to this region, and I can put the peg in that peg port there, enable 3D on this just to make it easier to move. So if I instead, if I move the sink down below the camera view, I can also select invert on the sink. And invert means that when the particles enter the sink, they disappear. So now you can see that they're going to disappear down there as well but they're disappearing for the opposite reason. They're disappearing because they're entering the sink instead of they're disappearing because they're leaving the sink. So basically, if you add together all these concepts, now we've touched on the majority of the actions that you'll use. You've got the gravity in there, you've got the sink. There are some other modules that you can play around with that are kind of exciting, like you've got the explosion. You've got the ability here to define a bounce plane um, which is kind of fun, so um, we could talk about the bounce plane sometime later. Um, repulse, you know, rotational velocity works like the, um, like the initial velocity does, or this velocity. In, a, in other words, it can define some rotational velocity on the particle to make the particle spin, but this rotational velocity only really applies when the particle is created, and then it's going to be affected by, um, you know, if there's any different our actions in the system that are affecting it. So there are also some um, there's some documentation for this stuff if you take a look at the user guide so if you're interested in playing around with some of the advanced options for your particle system then definitely have a read through of the user guide and uh, maybe I can do an advanced uh, particle tip later on but I don't want to spend too many weeks in a row going over the particle system and I feel like I've covered the main points by going over the overview and then the emitter and now some of the main actions through the gravity and the sink and the move particles, you've got most of what you need to do some actual examples. So then um, have a try at doing some particle examples and let me know how it goes. If you ever run into trouble, you can reach me on the forums and I can help you sort it out. So have a good week, guys, and I'll talk to you next week.